G'day trendsetters, John with Gravel Cyclist coming to you today with a review of the Cervelo Aspero gravel bike. If you're a regular visitor to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel or website, you'll already have seen my unboxing and features video of this particular bike. So for those who missed that video, I'll go over the features of this bike in a little more detail. Historically, Cervelo has been known for producing very fast bikes, namely for road, time trial and triathlon, but now we have a gravel bike that claims to be very fast. So the first thing I need to get out of the way immediately is this bike is designed purely for gravel racing and going fast, and Cervelo is very unapologetic about that. In Cervelo's own words, the Aspero hauls ass and not cargo. So you won't find rack and fender mounts on the Aspero, it's road racing inspired and gravel racing refined. A lot of gravel bikes in the market are completely overbuilt and the Aspero goes against that. And with Cervelo being Cervelo, they tweaked the frame to be aero even on gravel. The frame is engineered to be stiff with less and lighter material optimized for climbing and acceleration. So whilst the Aspero is designed to be a speed merchant, Cervelo hasn't totally ditched all versatility. There are three bottle cage mounts, a mounting point for a top tube bag, but not much else. Beneath the down tube is a guard to protect the frame from the abuse it will likely see. The seat post is 27.2 millimeters in width, brakes are flat mount front and rear, and through axles are 12 millimeters on the front and the usual 12 millimeter by 142 millimeter on the rear. The bike also supports one by and two by and setting the obvious, this variant is the flagship model kitted out with SRAM Force Access ETAP one by. More on that later. At the front of the bike is the tapered trail mix of fork that provides a two position adjustable dropout. The idea is that different sizes of wheel and tire combinations will play nicely with the Aspero's geometry. In other words, 700C by 40mm tires are going to steer and behave differently than 650B by 47mm. The forks trail will be affected, thus the 5mm of adjustment courtesy of the forks dropouts negates that issue. The rear position is intended for a smaller wheel and tire setup, whilst the forward position is intended for bigger. Unfortunately, I don't have any 650B wheels with a SRAM XDR driver laying around, so 700C by 38mm to 40mm is all I tested during the review, but no matter your wheel and tire choice, the fork trail is meant to sit at 62mm. Cervelo matches forks to frames and produces three forks to complement the six frame sizes. Speaking of which, this is a size 51 with a 532mm long top tube. To check out the trail and other geometry, I've overlaid the geometry chart from Cervelo. On the subject of wheels and tyres, the Aspero will accept 700C by 42mm or 650B by 49mm, courtesy of the dropped chainstay on the rear. But as a rule of thumb, it's best to leave at least 4mm of clearance around whatever tyre and wheel combination is installed. So that's all of the features covered of the Cervelo Aspero. How does it ride? There is no mistaking this bike is intended for racing. It is very sensitive to tyre pressure. If you don't have it dialed in appropriately for your body weight, you will experience a rough ride. But once your pressure is set, the Aspero does better and is straight up a flat out high performance gravel bike. Handling is top notch and the bike feels nicely balanced, even though I substituted the stock stem, more on that in a moment. Steering is very quick, akin to the feel of a cyclocross bike, but with a relaxed feel, meaning it isn't twitchy and nervous. I didn't get to test this bike on some proper mountainous descents, but I expect it would handle very well. The press fit bottom bracket isn't for everybody, and honestly, I'd prefer to see an English thread bottom bracket based on my long time experience riding these sorts of bikes in dodgy conditions. The down tube is massive, leading to an equally massive bottom bracket junction. I'm not the most powerful of riders, but I couldn't get the bottom bracket to move, and I expect others who ride this bike will experience the same. Consequently, power transfer is excellent. Everything you put into the crankset is going into the drivetrain. 
You could easily do double duty with the Aspero on pavement. It would fly with a set of 28 or 32 millimeter roadie tires for some pavement hammer time. Because of the stiff nature of the frame, and dare I say it, the most overused C word in cycling journalism, compliance, there isn't a lot of that, or pliability, or whatever else you want to call it, in the Aspero. Even with the tire pressure dialed in for your body weight, the ride is noticeably harsher than other carbon frames available on the market. With that said, I like how the Aspero rides. It reminds me of a road bike, but designed for gravel. If you're looking for a plush ride, this bike is definitely not for you. Regarding the longer stem, I wasn't able to obtain a size medium Aspero for review, so I improvised with a size small frame, substituting the 90mm stem for a 110mm stem and set back seat post. In the end, I'm glad I was riding the size small, as I really like the aggressive feel and look of the bike. Bike fit is a very personal thing, so what works for me may not work for you. The Eastern Cockpit parts are top notch, and I have reviewed the Eastern Carbon Flare Bar on this bike and have linked that review in the description below. I made a point to ride the stock Pro Logo saddle during the review. It isn't my favourite, but I was able to knock out several 80 mile rides without totally knackering myself. I mentioned tyre clearance earlier, and with the stock tyres mounted, clearance is getting a wee bit tight. To test the clearance, I rode the Aspero through a mud pit road somewhere in Georgia, US of A, to see how it handled the peanut butter clay mud. It helped that it rained cats and dogs the day before I filmed this video. I did experience a small amount of mud pack up, but not enough to lock the drivetrain, destroy the hangar, derailleur, and so on. So here is the Cervelo Aspero review bike. After riding through some seriously sticky mud in western Georgia, United States. Thankfully the bike hasn't clogged up. It's been close, but um, this mud is akin to peanut butter. The drivetrain is SRAM's force axis ETAP in a 1x12 configuration with a 36 tooth chainring and a 10 to 33 cassette. On the flatter terrain of north central Florida and the rolling terrain of southern Georgia where I did a lot of my testing, this was my favourite one by gearing setup to date. A nice tight cassette without annoying jumps and on a flatter road you can crank out 40 kilometres an hour or 25 miles an hour, no worries at all. However, if you're riding this bike on a gradient greater than 8%, you're probably going to hate life a bit. A mullet type build for one by would serve this bike better if you rode a lot of steep climbs or mountains, but I'd much rather see the ETAP 2x system on this bike with a SRAM 4633 2x chainring combination paired to the same cassette. The bike would be much more versatile with this setup. I plan to review the ETAP drivetrain separately in another video, so be sure to keep an eye on the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel. The stock DT carbon wheels look the business, but they aren't super light, but once rolling they hold their speed well. I ran a pair of MVG23 wheels with bird spokes and Panarasa Gravel King SK tires for a while on the Aspero. This combination markedly improved the bike's acceleration and overall performance, but extra speed costs. I'll be posting a separate review of these wheels soon, so watch this space. In closing, it should be obvious by now that this bike is not super comfy and definitely suits the racer type. You'll have to look elsewhere if you want more versatility for things like fender and rack mounts and a more comfy ride. Cervelo has been straight up about the performance virtues of the Aspero and for that I commend them. I like this bike a lot. So I hope you found this review to be helpful and insightful. I realize nowadays there is a ton of gravel bikes to choose from on the market. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. I'll see you in the next video.